Hello and welcome to another episode of the uh, Beechcraft D-18 project, turning this into a U.S. Navy SNB. And today we're going to kind of focus just on the cockpit. If you remember from the previous episode, I showed you how to cut the cockpit apart, and kind of separate the two halves. Well, I've been busy playing around with a lot of different materials so that I could try to replicate a little bit more detailed um, cockpit. And here is the uh, the final uh, result of my work so far. It's not done yet. I got a few pieces that are still waiting for to arrive before I go ahead and button this thing up. But I just want to talk about uh, some of the things I used to create the, uh, the cockpit here, um, which I think actually came out okay. Um, is it going to win a, uh, a scale model contest? No, absolutely not. Um, is it going to win Top Gun? No, nope, probably not that either. But when you put the canopy together, and it's sitting here in the uh, the shadows of um, that's created when you button this thing up. It actually looks fairly convincing, and really, that's all I'm looking at doing. I just want to bring enough detail to the aircraft so that it looks a little bit more convincing, a little bit more realistic. But I also know that um, it's not going to win any scale modeling contests at all. So, a few of the products that I used when I did this. Um, normally, I would have. Uh, if I had my CAD software, I would have designed up the entire cockpit, everything inside here in um, in SolidWorks. I would have had it 3D printed. I would have cut all the foam out of here and put in all those 3D printed parts and really made a really awesome looking cockpit, right? Well, that wasn't an option since I don't have CAD available to me right now. So I had to do things a little bit old school, meaning I had to um, go wander around... Um, a hobby store looking for different items that I could use to fabricate the interior and of course and do this pretty much on a budget too you know it's like I don't want to spend an absolute massive amount of money just in the cockpit here that you really only see a, just a mere fraction of so uh, I'll talk about the supplies I got then I'll kind of talk a little bit more on um, what I did to to update the cockpit here so I found this uh, bag of, um, it's just a strip bag of uh, balsa. It just includes just random sizes about everything you could imagine from balsa. So I got a hold of this knowing that I could easily fabricate small pieces. Uh, I can build structure. I can I can make almost anything I kind of needed to out of this, these bars. Like I said, they, they range in size here. I think this is like... Um, I don't know, that's probably, uh, what, a quarter by by three-eighths in there. There's uh, these little square strips. It, it's a it's just a grab bag of all sorts of stuff. And they come in pretty small sizes that are are really, I think, more convenient for someone like me to use. Then I didn't need a, you know, a three-foot or four-foot long strip of this stuff. I needed just small pieces that I could play with, but I didn't know what size I needed, right? I'm going to kind of make this up as I go. So uh, I just kind of um, grabbed this bag here. I thought this was actually a pretty good purchase. I didn't use nearly as much of it as I thought, but uh, I guarantee you it's going to get plenty of use in other projects going forward. Then I picked up two different types of uh, foam here. Um, I got some, um, this stuff here is uh, just about a half inch. Uh, it's actually 0.6 inches by, um, by, by 12 by 12. Um, this is what I loved about this stuff is it said it's uh, it's easy to paint uh, Which is like wow easy to paint and it was two whole dollars. So for two bucks I'm like, yeah, I'll give that a shot and then I picked up um, Another piece here. That's uh, one inch by six by twelve um, Also, uh, it says easy to paint so um, a little lesson learned about easy to paint foam that you find at a hobby shop When it says easy to paint it means it's easily deformed by paint is what it should say. Um, I quickly found out uh, when I got home, I cut a little chunk off and I missed it just a little aerosol on it just to see, right? Little uh, Rust-Oleum 2X. I use 2X on all sorts of projects, on foam airplanes, on all sorts of stuff. I'm like, I'm just going to put a light mist over the top and see what it does. 20 minutes later, I came out to the garage to take a look at my piece of foam and it had completely dissolved and was gone. So, um... Rust-Oleum 2X paint, no good. Uh, I tried uh, Tamiya paint, Tester's paint, no good either. Completely dissolves it. Uh, permanent marker will dissolve it. I made some uh, some lines on here. Uh, you can see on um, on this piece here. Uh, that's the uh, the shape of the bulkhead, and that silver up there um, is, so, is a just a sharpie permanent marker ate through the uh, the foam. So. 
not great stuff at all. What does work though is latex paint and acrylic paint. So I went down to um, Home Depot with my can or my little bottle of uh, Tamiya Dark Green. This is the XF70. This is the color I selected for uh, interior green, which is what the uh, most of the cockpit of the D18 uh, was painted in for the military version. So I took this down to Home Depot and I had a mix me up a paint uh, sample of um, this bare, um, I think it's, uh, well, let's see, I think it's satin. Um, yep, it's satin uh, sample here. They made it to match and that latex paint, um, can be applied to this foam without eating it, but it takes a lot of layers of uh, paint to actually get it to conform to this. I cut it with um, with an X-Acto knife, and then um, it leaves a horribly jagged edge when you cut it. It does not cut very well at all. So if you're going to use this for any type of modeling, cut everything big. I mean, cut everything with probably a good eighth to a quarter inch extra material around it. And then I used a, uh, a nail file. Um, to go through and I sanded all the edges down and by sanding the edges you actually clean up a lot of that rough surface And then you can also conform it to fit the the, uh, the cockpit as well. So I did that when I built this um, This bulkhead uh, section here. I made that out of the foam and then I just sanded it until um, I could drop this back on top of it and it um, Fit along the sides and wasn't sticking up when I first started it was up probably a good I know three eighths of an inch or so. So a little bit of work there. Sand it down. It makes an absolute mess. So um, make sure you um, you have your vacuum ready when you are done because you'll be cleaning up foam bits from literally everywhere. I also used um, a sheet of balsa here. Let me try to get this out. Um, here we go. Uh, just a thin piece of uh, of balsa, and you see that's the shape of that uh, that bulkhead that I was just talking about that um, sits behind the uh, the pilot and co-pilot. So, um, because of the way the foam was so rough, I really couldn't get away with having that being what you look at when you peer through the windshield. So I cut out the uh, the balsa, sanded it, and it glued that to the foam, which actually gave it a lot of support too. It really strengthened that up. And then I painted it with that same uh, latex paint, just uh, two layers of paint on top of there, and uh, that was just enough to um, kind of soak in and make that look awfully convincing once the uh, the canopy is on. From here, it doesn't look great. But like I said, once you get the uh, the canopy on and it kind of hides everything in shadow, things do look a lot better. Uh, one of the other things I created out of foam was the uh, the throttle quadrant here. And for that, I just cut a, uh, a piece of foam, cut it on a round angle, and then I used that nail file, sanded it down until the uh, the surface finish was a little bit more consistent, painted it with the, uh, the latex uh, dark green. And then I picked up um, some of these matte uh, push pins. So the push pins um, are like a stainless steel uh, rod with a little plastic ball on top. And they're relatively close in shape to the, uh, the throttle mixture and prop settings, um, the, the prop adjustments on the, uh, the D18. They're not perfect, right? This is not gonna win a scale contest, uh, but they look, they look fairly correct when you, uh, you put the cockpit all together. But yeah, they're not going to win any type of a scale contest. And if you can 3D print these where you can design them up, 3D print it, you can get a lot better than what I did here. But uh, for relatively low amount of cost and just a lot of labor with um, sanding and cutting, I was able to make a, a throttle quadrant there. And then I put in the rest of the uh, the levers and everything and, and a little trim wheel at the uh, the bottom, which isn't, her which isn't very correct. It's supposed to be a wheel, not a ball, but it gets the job done. As for the uh, the instrument panel, um, that's actually just a picture of a D18 cockpit. Um, it measures three inches across for those playing at home. Uh, so if you go three inches side to side, that will actually fit in perfectly into the uh, the cockpit of uh, the D18. And since it has a little raised section above here with some additional gauges, which um, appears to be more prevalent on the military versions than the civilian ones, I went into my strip bag of uh, balsa cut a piece, sanded it, and, and glued it into place. And then I covered the uh, the top of the uh, the uh, cockpit instrument panel here with um, matte black uh, vinyl. Um, that helps in case the uh, the foam underneath gets hot and starts to bubble up a little bit. It just kind of helps make that uh, surface look a little bit better. Um, it's, not, it's not great, but like I said, once again, once you put this all together on here, um, it starts to look a lot more um, convincing. 
So uh, the pilots needed something to hang on to, so um, I really wanted to find a um, design online of, a, of the actual yokes that um, the D18 uses. Uh, what's interesting about them is they're a lot like the P38 Lightning in which the, um, like if you're in the pilot seat, the, um, the control column actually comes up from your side and then comes up at an angle and then the wheel or the yoke sits in front of you. Uh, that's so you can actually get your legs in underneath. The co-pilots comes up from the opposite side. So they kind of come up, angle in, and then the yoke sits there. I dug around online. I couldn't find anybody who made either a P38 or a Beach 18 um, yoke. So I dug around my parts bin and I found a set from a uh, B17 that were laying around and unused. And while they're, they're not the scale, I uh, mean, not even the correct shape, they don't look terrible once you uh, put the cockpit on. The saving grace of this that you can get away with on the Beechcraft that you can't do on a fighter plane like a P-51 or a Corsair or a P-47 that's got the, you know, the full-blown canopy on the top is you can get away with not having the best quality in here because it's all in shadow because this thing covers it up so well. So take advantage of that and uh, kind of you can get away with stuff that you normally couldn't get away with on a fighter plane. And while I was working on this, I actually was thinking back to uh, a number of years ago, I went to uh, an exhibit at the um, Museum of Science and Industry in, in Chicago, and they had the original uh, props on display from uh, from the Star Wars movies, from the original like 1970 or you know late 70s, early 80s Star Wars movies. And you know, as a kid, you always looked at the, the models and you looked at the uh, the costumes and man, they look so amazing on, on TV, right? and in the movie theater. And then when you go there and you look at what the costumes actually look like, it's amazing how much stuff looked like it was literally fabricated out of balsa and foam and throw some paint on it and things that they found laying around the prop shop, they just glued them all together to make stuff. Um, it's pretty amazing because on camera, it looks so real and convincing, but when you get up close to it, you're seeing details that are normally not seen. The cockpit of this is a lot like that. You can get away with maybe not being so perfect and just live with the fact that it's gonna be in shadow and that's gonna help hide it. So uh, moving back, um, we talked about the yokes, gonna go on to the pilots now. We talked about them just a little bit. These are the 1.1 meter uh, Warbird pilots that are available from uh, Horizon Hobby. Just go right to the website, type that in, you'll find these guys. Um, I did add the, uh, the felt. Uh, on the collars to kind of replicate a um, the Navy fur collar that they would have used on uh, their intermediate flight jackets. And then just did a little paint work, painted their uh, their helmets uh, kind of a tan khaki color um, instead of the uh, the dark brown that would have looked more like a European uh, theater of operations or Army Air Force pilot. So very little detail work was done here, just to touch up a few things and call them good. And they don't look too bad. They're sized about right. Um, they, they, they fit the part and, uh, they're closer than anything else I could really find. Um, and I didn't want to spend a massive amount of money on pilots that you really don't see that much of when the, uh, the cockpit is on. Moving back to the bulkhead, you see, I got some wiring in here and a couple little plastic bits. Um, I have found that, um, if you use network cable, like this cat five cable here, um, if you cut the, uh, this uh, sheath off of it and uh, expose the wire, this stuff is fantastic for, uh, for detailing cockpits. Like if you, um, you know, for instance here, I got, uh, I got some wiring that comes up off the floor, goes up over the bulkhead, goes into some junction boxes, which are actually leftover, um, Maverick missile, um, igniters from, uh, from an A-10 project that, um, they printed the wrong scale and I didn't know what to do with them. So... Paint, stuck them in here, painted them up a little bit, ran some wire to it. They're now electrical junction boxes. Trying to find accurate pictures of what this bulkhead looks like from the cockpit looking rearward is extremely difficult. So I can't find anything to really tell me what it should look like, but it also, like I said, when you put the canopy on and it's in shadow, it looks fairly convincing as is. Flipping over the backside, I found pictures that support that there's a little uh, tan colored um, it's like a little canvas bag or something that's hooked to that um, rear of the bulkhead. And there's also some sort of a leather or canvas bag that hangs on the uh, the bulkhead as you go from the uh, the more the passenger compartment up to the, uh, the cockpit. So I used my uh, trusty bag of balsa there, cut some pieces, sanded them down, did a little weathering with some uh, pencil, and voila, I have uh, some extra detail there. On this side here, we'll have a fire extinguisher, and I'm waiting for my fire extinguisher to arrive. 
Thankfully, this aircraft is 110 scale, so you can use things like a 110 scale uh, crawler accessories, and you can find fire extinguishers, jerry cans, axes, all sorts of stuff like that. So I picked up some of those. They're on their way in here. They should be here soon. I'll get that glued in. And then lastly, the uh, the seat belts and buckles are um, just Tamiya uh, masking tape uh, laid into place there, and then uses a permanent marker to draw the buckles on it and everything. So. Um, not the uh, the most high-tech way of doing stuff at all for a cockpit, but like I said, it's really amazing that when you when you hook this thing all together and when this is all glued up, um, it, when you look inside, it really, it looks pretty good. It's better than it was from the factory in which we had that uh, civilian pilot sitting there in, in yellow in a sea of gloss black. Um, it adds more detail, a little bit more uh, visual interest to the aircraft, but on the other hand, um, I didn't go crazy in terms of designing a full-blown cockpit, mostly because I didn't have the opportunity to. But if you would, even if you would have done all that work, uh, most of it would probably be hidden by the time you glue it all back together. Um, and then that'd been kind of a waste. I'd rather take that time and spend it on something else. Uh, one thing I will touch on before we um, we move off this subject and on to the next one is on the inside of the uh, the co cockpit here, I did paint this. I talked about that last time. This is kind of a supposed to replicate zinc chromate and this is interior green around the window frame. And then I took another one of those um, little uh, Maverick missile igniters and glued that in here with a uh, wire coming off of it from the Cat5 cable. But when you put it all together, um, you can't see it anyway. So, um, uh, kind of a waste of effort, but it's there. Um, who knows? Maybe, uh, if the lighting is just right and the airplane is inverted, maybe you can see it, but that's another case where, uh, you, I did the effort, but, uh, not really warranted. So if you're doing one of these yourself, um, I wouldn't bother doing anything on the, um, on the inside of the canopy here. You really can't, um, see it. So if you guys got any questions, by all means, leave uh, your comments below. Um, I had thought about doing a little bit more of a how-to video on how I made a lot of that stuff, but to be honest, it was uh, a lot of trial and error and a lot of messy just playing around with stuff and um, not something I necessarily thought was worthy to do a video of because it was like a lot of sitting around staring at all this stuff and sanding and playing around with what I had available to see what I could do. Um, it was not a very well thought out strategic process that would have lent itself well to um, doing a video documentary on. But um, I think I've covered it enough to say like, if you buy the foam, you buy the balsa, you got an X-Acto knife, you got um, get some latex paint, you got a nail file, um, you can get close enough. And what's nice about this aircraft is for the cockpit, close enough is really all you need to do because once it's all buttoned up, you can't see so much of it anyway. So, but I'm more than happy to ask, uh, answer any questions you guys may have on it. And I can talk you through even more of the process if you need to know it. But, um, yeah, that kind of wraps up what I'm going to do here. I'm just waiting for the, um, for the fire extinguisher to arrive and then I'll glue that into place. And then I'll be using, uh, some, some foam tack glue and I will glue the, uh, the cockpit together and then mask off all the windows because the next step is we're going to start moving away from the cockpit detail to actually painting the aircraft. Um, so I'm starting to gather up all the supplies needed for that, starting to put my strategy together on how I want to paint it, the order I want to paint it. And that's what we're going to be covering uh, next time. But this pretty much wraps up the uh, the cockpit. I'll probably do one more final one just with a fire extinguisher installed just to highlight everything I did before we buttoned it up. But for now, this one's done.